how are you? Did you did you guys go out to eat or did you? No. Did you? Is he gonna stay with us or is he gonna abandon us for a police department too? I'll tell you. Yeah. Seem pretty gung ho. That's a fun day. I like that graduation. I enjoy I enjoy doing that. Who's your list of committees? I'm on this committee list. There you go. Motion. Good afternoon, everyone. We'd like to get the hi. We'd like to get the uh, Economic Development Committee meeting started today. We have courtesy of the floor. If anybody in the public I'm not seeing any, we have a presentation from the Northampton County Historical and Geneolo Genealogical Society. Hello, everybody. Um, and we'd like to introduce Carrie and Megan who are here to give council some more information about our Northampton County Historical and Genealogical Society and they also operate um, out of the Siegel Museum building downtown East Dillon. Yeah, we should go see that place. Hello everyone, good afternoon. You'll have to pardon us, we are tag teaming here, but mm -hmm. we, we make a good team and there's a lot of information and we don't want to keep you here too long. My name is Carrie Biergel, I'm the Executive Director at the Historical Society and... I'm Megan Van Raven Sway, Director of Development. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Many of you know Megan already, I believe, from Moravian Historical Society and Historic Bethlehem, but she joined us as Director of Development last year, mm -hmm. so we were l really lucky to get her. Now, we have a mouthful of information for everyone. So those of you who have not been to the Siegel Museum, a little bit of brief background. So the Historical Society was incorporated in 1906. There were a group of historians that were meeting before that, of course, but most of the donations in the county were going to Easton Public Library until Easton Public Library called that group up and they said, you know, too many people are donating objects and we have no space for this, we just want the books and papers, so you have to have a historical society. Mm -hmm. So that was the glorious beginning of the historical society. So for many, many years we were headquartered at the Mikesell Illick House, which is at 4th and Ferry. We are now, of course, headquartered at the Siegel Museum. Mm -hmm. It opened in 2010, so we're very excited. Our 10th anniversary will be next year in 2020. So the Historical Society is basically the umbrella organization for our flagship Siegel Museum, which is where we show off most of our collection. We also have three historic properties, the 1753 Bachman Public House, we have the Mikesell Illick House, and we have the Jacob Nicholas House, which actually is owned by the city of Easton, but it's something that we administer. And I cannot forget, we also have the Kressler Gardens, which yeah. is over on 4th, um, right caddy corner to the Mikesell Illick House. So three historic structures and a garden, as well as the Siegel Museum. So we have a lot that we're taking care of. I'm switching over to this slide for you right here. We are in the middle of a strategic plan. We're actually coming to the end, which was graciously supported by the county and a SIP grant. And I know most people are not excited about strategic planning, but we have had an excellent experience um, with a museum educator, somebody who's done many plans. We have gone through a whole process of revising our mission, so why is this important? We are trying to go the way of a lot of museums these days. If you look at most historical societies, missions, we all say the same thing. We preserve, collect, and display things in such and such a county. But what we're trying to do is start talking to the public not so much about what we do, but why we do it. So we went through the revision process, and our new mission is we share the stories of Northampton County's past to encourage personal reflection, community dialogue, and understanding of history's impact on our lives. So why is that important? We see ourselves as more than just a local history museum. It's incredibly important to preserve those memories, but we also see ourselves as a real community forum 
And I think as we go through the presentation, you'll see just how much we're involved in this community and we have a real opportunity with the History Museum. A lot of things can be history. It's a great place to have community dialogues. You can talk about current events and it's something that we are really working towards doing and that's gonna be a big part of our plan moving forward. And we're pleased to present this to you tonight. This was just passed two weeks ago, so you're the first people to see our new mission statement. Hmm. So we are gonna remind you this slide right up here. Many of you have seen this. This oh, was yes. the Northampton County History Book that was published at the end of 2017, also funded with county money. That is in our bookstores and local bookstores and has been selling very nicely. The folks that you see on this slide, we really wanted you to see this because we have a staff of five full-timers. We have five part-timers, but we are really unique in the county in that we have a huge number of volunteers who help us run the society. They help us with programming. They help us with volunteer coordination. They do the work of what normal staff people do, and we do not have to pay them. So we're incredibly fortunate for that. We've also got a really nice crew of interns mm -hmm. who are with us this summer. Mm -hmm. um, we tend to attract interns from all over the region. We even have one from University of Washington this summer, which mm. we're pleased about. But Lafayette, Lehigh, Muhlenberg, Cedarcrest, they're all represented. Um, and we all believe passionately in giving these students something solid for their resume and the ability to make um, professional um, acquaintances here in the area. And they help us, which is great. So those of you who have not been to the Siegel Museum yet, this is a picture of the museum. These are some gorgeous antique cars that we had for the opening of our Roaring Twenty show. We had a local collector who brought the cars there. But we've got an incredibly diverse collection. As you know, we start with Lenape history and we go all the way up to the present day. Hmm. So we have the first pumper truck in Easton. Now, Megan is not going to look at this slide. We have some really interesting objects in the collection. We have gorgeous that. photos, but you'll see the like little the fellow right thing. there. That is little master Bobby. Some of you know him. I hate him. <laughs> Megan can't look. Yeah. He right. was actually, oh. <laughs> it's important oh, that people really? express themselves. Yeah. Oh. But he actually has a fan club, so this is why it's a joke. Little Master Bobby was made by Jacob Haas, who was a soldier in the Civil War. We have his diaries from the Civil War, which are amazing. He talked about his life, he drew pictures of the battle, but after the war was over, he decided that a great way to make a living would be to be as a ventriloquist. So this was part of his traveling act that he took all over the country, and he now lives with us. Love him or hate him, he's very polarizing, but we have some very interesting artifacts. No, she said polarizing. Oh, she didn't yeah, say no, traumatizing. No. <laughs> that too. That too. So obviously we have an incredible textile collection, most of which is stored at our Mikesell house, but all the way back to the 1700s. We have fashion students coming to us from Parsons, people from museums like the Smithsonian, who kind of can't believe what we have. So it is a real treasure, and it's a great way to connect with the public. Photographs and clothing are always things that we can all relate to. So we have Civil War things. You see some kids down here who are actually being mustered into the Union Army as part of the school program. They learned that one of the tricks the, uh, the soldiers used to do, that if you, you had to be a certain age. So one of the tricks they would do, trying to be honest, is they would have the number 16 and they would put it in the heel of their shoe, for instance, and then when the recruiter would ask, are you over 16, they would say yes, and they wouldn't actually be lying, and that was apparently something they did quite a lot of, so the kids got a kick out of that. We have gorgeous paintings, decorative art collections, special hmm. exhibitions. Right now, we're very sad that it's coming to the end soon, but we have, it's the Cat's Meow, which is the Roaring Twenties in the Lehigh Valley. Hmm. As many of you know, this was a very interesting place to be in the 1920s. So that is actually, it was extended because it was so popular, it's coming down at the end of the summer. This is a 1910 Excelsior motorbike that was actually in Mrs. Siegel's basement that was a part of her father-in-law's motorcycle collection. So when we said we wanted to do this 20 show, she said, would you like a 1910 Excelsior motorbike? And we said, sure, and she said, it's in my basement. So fun things like there. this happen all the time. We have a huge number of education programs, as you would expect. We have free 
school field trips that we can offer through EITC. We offer free admission to families who are on SNAP benefits because what we are noticing more and more is that we've got an incredibly diverse audience. We really do have to do programming for all age groups and interests. We have lecture series. We have up to 60 programs that we do everywhere. This can be lectures, family programs, kids programs. We've got some good photos here. We've got the historic Easton walking tour. We have school groups. They call this the selfie wigwam. <laughs> it's our Lenape wigwam. They call it the selfie wigwam because they like to take their photos there. And we welcome on average of 10,000 visitors a year through the Siegel Museum. We can certainly accommodate more. Um, and we do accommodate college classes coming for visits, the standard field trips, um, different groups like the Red Hats might come through, as well as your individual vis visitors from all across the world, certainly regionally. And the other nice thing is we do have the students visiting us, but we also go out to the school. So you see two young men up in the corner there in their little breeches. That was Harmony Township, New Jersey had a staycation. They had a busing problem. They couldn't afford the buses, so they asked mm -hmm. us to come out, which we did. You can see we even have babies. That's our BYOB, or Bring Your Own Baby program, <laughs> which is actually designed for the parents to get a little bit of interaction, but we have fun things for the babies to do, too. This was a lovely group of the local PBS station had their summer camp, and they come and they film in the museum, and we do programs with them as well. This is an example of one of our community maker projects. So we had a quilting show at the museum. Lots of you might remember this. We quilted the front facade of the Siegel Museum and had a lot of people involved with the community, which was a great way to bring people in. We had an opening of our 20s program with our dancers. We have a lot of rental events. This past March, Megan, you were at this event, Gail Hoover's Charity Bash. It was at the museum. It was absolutely yeah. wonderful. I, I'm sure you saw it in the newspaper. This is where she donated um, mm -hmm. smoking equipment. Not that I'm not saying it correctly. The They're the oxygen masks. masks for dogs. Yes, yeah. It was a blast. We had <coughs> a very good night. So all ages, all groups, our major fundraiser that we have every year is also in partnership. It's pretty unique. It's a partnership between our organization and the Children's Home of Easton. So we have the wine gala and auction. It is incredibly successful. We're very lucky, but it's also very unique in that we have two organizations working so well together. We have our Bachman Public House. Now one of the things that we're working on really closely <laughs> with the strategic programming is the need that we all have in our various communities. We have these beautiful historic homes. They cost a lot of money to maintain, and we need to use them in the community. We can't just have them open a few days a year so that something, we are really looking at our historic houses to see, are we using them properly? Can we use them more? Are they meeting the mission? So the Bachman Public House does everything from school field trips, special events, we have a history trivia night that we started doing at Bachman. We are quickly outgrowing mm -hmm. our space. Um, you'll see up in the right-hand corner, you see Benjamin Franklin there with the kids. He stops by every once in a while. That day was a lot of fun because the kids were so surprised to see him. Mm -hmm. And he they were given the opportunity to ask him a question. You think about a question you'd want to ask Benjamin Franklin. They asked him what kind of underwear he wore, which we <laughs> thought was it. The gentleman on the left, we actually have a 19th century dry goods store that we created there because one of the things we want to show with this building is that it's living history. It's not just a colonial tavern. Um, so we have all different periods in there. We're working on sort of an immersive theater program there as well. We have the Lenape Nation of Pennsylvania is on the ground floor. Their cultural center is at the Bachman. We give that to them for free. We have the fantastic Bachman players. So we have colonial dinner theater there, <laughs> one to two times a year. Again, this is all volunteer run. They don't charge us anything for it, and the money goes to our organization. They are, they sell out. They sell out. They're hard to get, and really fun things happen. Like we, the last one was in June, and it was John Adams, and just as the play was getting started, the big East End brass band came down the street playing when the saints come marching in, and he had to just pretend that he was still in the 1700s, <laughs> which is pretty good. So we have this tiny Jacob Nicholas house. We love this because this is one of the rare examples of a working class home. So it belonged to a Durham boat captain 
who is also a wood turner. This is so small that it's hard to use. We've used it for tours, but we've also developed a partnership with the community garden that's right behind us. So we're going to start doing community programs outside. Our Mikesel Illich House, which is where our headquarters used to be. We have small exhibits, textile storage. We have our Civil War reenactors there. We have school groups who learn about what it was like to be a child in Victorian times. This was our haunted history night, so people came for a fake seance. We have history-themed teas, which also sell out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So again, trying to put these things to work. Community building events and collaborations are really at the heart of what we do. We really pride ourselves on the number of collaborations we have. We are always open to working with other organizations in the community and other nonprofits because we sort of sink or swim based on that. We should, we're not competing with each other. We, of course, have Heritage Day. We take part in this, we do not run it. Um, we certainly have events and activities, but this is a community event that we're proud to be a part of. We have many partners from the Lehigh Valley Engaged Humanities Consortium, which is administering a Mellon grant through Lafayette, Passport to History. Executive McClure was very kind. He hosted a press release party for us when we announced this initiative. I'm gonna let Megan talk a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. um, we're very pleased with uh, Passport to History. What um, This came out of an idea about 10 years ago, but it was resurrected last year with the help of your hotel tax grant. Um, we took a leadership role and we gathered together 25 local museums, historical sites, and nonprofits um, into a committee and we all began talking with each other in one room. What are the problems? What's working? What's not? Some of us had never even met before. Um, what you're looking at is a website that is live and ready to go um, and this is a collaborative website. So now the regional tourist can Google find this information and what they're going to find on this website is all of our information, our contact hours, um, you know, our address, what we offer. A lot of our small nonprofits don't even have websites, so this was fantastic for them. This is in complete partnership with Discover Lehigh Valley. They were thrilled with this. Um, we are 100% 100% partners with them, excuse me. Um, but it's also, um, the committee also exists to develop tourism um, packages. Uh, we've talked with uh, the d economic development team. There's an idea about a heritage trail. Just other ways that history lovers, architecture lovers can come and connect with uh, the mm -hmm. Lehigh um, Valley community. Um, we also hosted a, a tourism day, similar to Open Gate Farm Tours. We hosted a Passport to History Day in which we were all open and we had um, almost a thousand visitors come to the property. This year we are asking through um, a hotel tax grant for a marketing consultant to take this over. This is a really good thing that we Unfortunately, Carrie and I literally don't have the time to manage this and give it what, it's, what it needs. Um, so we are asking for funds for a marketing consultant to take over the Passport to History website, um, PR, and of course that history day, could it become a weekend? We think that there's a lot of opportunities there. Well, and the nice thing as well from the group, we hear this a lot, it gives everybody a chance to step back and think about the big picture and <coughs> tourism in the county and bringing visitors in and how we can work together to do this sort of thing. So it's been a really positive experience thus far and it can only continue at this point. So this is another group project that we did. We worked with the NAACP branch in Easton and also Lafayette College. We had a black experience oral history project which gave way to two events these are the types of community dialogues that we are really working hard to do and stress. So we had, in 2018, we had almost 200 people who packed the museum talking about the black experience in Easton and the Lehigh Valley. We had the same thing happening in, let me show you these ladies. We did one for the ladies this time, this year. This was Sister Circle, which was from the women's perspective. It was incredibly inspiring. We had and not enough room in the museum to put everybody wow. in there. Mm -hmm. But this is the type of thing that we're trying to do for the community. And there were lots of wonderful things that came out of it. This slide previously 
a Lafayette English College basically took some of the archival material that we've been collecting with Lafayette. They used this in one of their class courses to create an exhibit that they put on for the school. So we reach into all different areas of the community. We did something on the Jewish presence in Northampton County last year. We worked closely with the Lenape. These events are incredible because, for instance, the Lenape does not have a lot of presence. They don't have a big web presence. We can give them a voice, which is what we're here for as the County Historical Society. We collaborate with other institutions like the cemetery to create programs because they don't have a budget to do it on their own. This was another one that was a huge hmm. hit for us, the Urban Renewal. Um, Bob Freeman asked if we'd like to do a program. We had a whole community dialogue on urban renewal as well. All of this is feeding into a new permanent exhibit that we're gonna be opening in November, which you'll be hearing a lot more about, mm -hmm. and you'll all be invited to the opening. We've been working for three years with the help of funding from the county, also the Mellon Grant. Destination Northampton County is going to be an exhibit that is basically celebrating the immigrant ethnic mm. groups that came to the country but people who have come recently as well. So it's a mm. whole celebration of inclusivity, of diversity, what that experience has been like. We've been collecting stories, objects, artifacts from different people in the community, some community members who haven't really opened up before. So this is going to be opening up on our lower level, and we have all kinds of questions and programming coming out of this, ideas of what is community, what, how do you create community? We have everything from the Lebanese community to the Jewish community, African American, Italian, all over the county. We have incredible programs. We're doing with schools and other organizations in the county. Now, we also have an interesting challenge because we're putting this space in our lower level because that space is vacant. Frankly, we don't have enough room mm -hmm. for all of the people who want to participate. So this is the beginning of an initiative for us that we think is incredibly important as a museum will be taking those stories up through the permanent galleries. So it's important to us because we really think that people need to be able to see themselves reflected in the museum. Our history in colonial times is wonderful, but when we can have somebody walk in and say, I'm Lebanese and I've been in this community for 50 years, and they can actually see something reflected there, there's a great deal of trust and a great deal of openness, and it's a way for us to invite people in to talk about issues. So it's something that we're really gonna be focusing mm -hmm. on in the future. There are goals. What yeah. do you think? Yeah, um, so of course, as Carrie mentioned, we are approaching our 10-year um, anniversary. So with the thanks to the three to five-year strategic plan that is currently being developed, um, we certainly have a lot of future goals. Um, the, you're seeing, of course, in this slide, continued collaboration with other nonprofits and organizations is key for us. As Carrie mentioned, we are, do not feel we're in competition with anybody. We feel like we're partners in arms with our fellow nonprofits. Um, we will, of course, continue our year-round event programming. You heard, you heard Carrie mention we do 60 programs a year. We have a staff of five full-time employees. That's an incredible output for our community. We again have those three historic structures and we're staring down needing a new roof on Bachman Public, which is $70,000. So we have a significant amount of preservation projects that we're undertaking. We are also finding it's important to come up with maintenance plans for these structures so we don't come up to a $70,000 bill. We're tackling these as they come along. Um, and of course, the reinterpretation of the permanent exhibitions, as Carrie mentioned, weaving the stories of um, the last 50 years in our immigrant community into the exhibition throughout the whole Siegel Museum, not just the lower level. And um, through the help of EITC funding through the state, we were able to hire a part-time education coordinator, mm -hmm. which is incredibly helpful to us. So our field trips, our education programming will be expanded. I hope you all noticed that we started a new summer camp this summer. That's one of her new initiatives as well. And so for as far as the programming goes, right now we have about 2,200 kids who come through on field trips, and again, we are relying on volunteers. We have retired principals and teachers who are doing this, but we could be doing so much more. So we see this as a huge area of growth for us. We could, we're going to be writing curriculum, working closely with the teachers. 
So again, there's a theme here. The idea is to open this museum up because we realize we're dealing with issues like some people do not even know what the Siegel Museum is. It's only 10 years old, it's understandable. It's something that a lot of museums are going through. How can you be relevant for your public and how can you be of service? And we just feel like this is an incredible place to do it. We're very grateful to all of you for your support because we honestly couldn't do it. I'm not just saying that without you. And our goal is to basically be more and more open to our community and collaborating with everyone. Mm -hmm. We're happy to take any questions. Yeah, I have a couple, but go ahead. No, you could go first. You're the chair. Um, just the, uh, your first book, is that available? Yeah. It's available at your facility. At the Siegel Museum, okay. it's at Meridian Bookstore. It is at some of the Barnes and Nobles. Okay. Sometimes they have to restock, but we do have it. Okay, great. And also, can we get a copy of this um, slides? These slides emailed to us or sent yes, to us? Absolutely. Okay. Not now, but just later, because there's some websites I couldn't see. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to email them after you do. next week. Okay. So that's all right. We yeah, that's fine. Sure. But we'll also send the PDF to you as well. Perfect. Okay. Please. Okay. So you said that you're going to open an exhibit on in the basement floor, mm -hmm. lower level. the lower level. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you're building this handicap accessible mm -hmm. on every level. Yes. What? <coughs> I'm sorry. I was just wondering if your building was handicap accessible on every level. Yes. yes. Restrooms, elevator. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. And the ramp, the emergency exit ramp. Just checking. Yes. Um, because you know, people are. Yes. If you're opening that level up, mm -hmm. maybe it wasn't compliant before. Maybe you're making it compliant yeah. now. So I was trying to give you an opportunity to talk um, about that. That means of egress. We've had mm -hmm. those those conversations with our mm -hmm. insurance agent. That means of egress. So yes. Okay. Great. So the other comment I had was on your um, the exhibit that you're going to do about immigrants, mm -hmm. because uh, my family is Windish. Which is like an odd indigenous group to this that's very hyper local to this area. And there's a huge cache of materials in, on the south side of Bethlehem that an uncle of mine is just hoarding. <gasps> I mean, there's like a lot there. There's the whole genealogy of the Zerensky family. Great. And um, of other windish immigrants who came so i would love to put you in contact with him if you wouldn't mind so one of the reasons this has been almost three years in the making and you might ask which groups are you featuring because this has been a very delicate process for us mm -hmm. because we start working with groups and they'll go back and they'll talk to their communities and they'll say we get the whole floor mm. say, no no we actually we aren't doing real that. estate <laughs> but mm. we are putting the main focus on the groups who have worked with us most closely. But again, this is something that we're going to continue collecting. And it's sort of, it's been this process of reaching out to people. So yes. Thank I would, you. If I could leave you my card. Yeah. We would okay. love to. Because we're still, I mean, the exhibition opens in November, folks. We're hoping to come in front of you before that to talk a little bit more about it. It opens in November. We are still getting stories mm -hmm. and incorporating them. It's been a real treat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I keep running into people who are like cousins of mine that I never knew. And right. it's because of this person who has mapped our genealogy out that we even know that these people in the Lehigh Valley exist. Uh -huh. So it's just like, you know, a I'm weird. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Warner. Thanks. And the musician, wasn't this the one with the musician? Yes, mm -hmm. yes we and did something at the museum. Yes. We hadn't kept the program going. It was also in conjunction with an exhibit that we had, but this brings up another issue. We talk about these bus tours, because we know within Easton, we've just sort of been working together to try to bring in bus tours. This is a big issue to mm -hmm. reach out with them 
and it's something we really need to work with Discover Lehigh Valley. There are really simple things that we could be doing, like a heritage trail. Mm -hmm. And for these special interest groups. Every week. They have not come to see us. You're what? Interesting. Really? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. And the third thing is, um, I didn't know uh, this. When they, when we do the Food and Ecology Tours and other people do the historic areas, um, we uh, found a can this is a story I've never heard about. We found cannonballs in our yard. And I took them to Tim from Mexico. Okay. And I walked them into the secret museum and they could explode. I've heard this story, okay. Mr. Warren. <laughs> I've heard this. Are they also? No. no. <laughs> yes. I appreciate the. I appreciate your what you do, and that uh, I really feel a part of history is there. <laughs> Because <laughs> they found the cannonballs in our yard. Because you found it. And we should say, I mean, we, we joke about this a lot. We say it with great affection because the museum is closed to the public on Mondays and Tuesdays. Then when we open on Wednesday, we all in the office try to get all of our work done on Mondays and Tuesdays because it's amazing what walks through our door. I mean, it's to your point. Absolutely. Somebody will show up with this. I have Ben Franklin's glasses. I'm here to talk about my relative mm -hmm. from seven generations back. It's a real pleasure and an honor to do this sort of thing mm -hmm. and we always welcome it mm -hmm. and any suggestions that anyone has we're absolutely open to it for programs or anything yeah, else thank you thank you very much you. so we do hope to be back in front of you in October to formally invite you to the opening of the new exhibition that takes place uh, the VIP opening is November 1st that's a Friday it's 5 to 7 p.m. Um, we are working to have the Consul General of Lebanon attend from New York City. So we're working on that right now. Um, and then, of course, there's the public opening, which is taking place on November 9th from 11 to 4 p.m. for the community. Um, we also do, of course, would love to take this opportunity to be in front of you. We would like to strengthen our relationship with the County Council. One of the things we've been speaking about is would the Council be interested in appointing a representative from the Council to be on our board? We have the honor of being your official historical society, and we certainly feel somebody should be present on our board level from County Council. And then at any time, we welcome you for a tour. If you would like to come through the Seagull, we would be thrilled to take you through. When so are your meetings? They vary, but I can certainly get that information out. Our mm -hmm. board meetings, we mm -hmm. have them every two months. They're mm -hmm. usually the third Wednesday of the month at 4.30. Oh, that, the third Wednesday. Do we not all have meetings on that That's at a committee that time? Meeting for us. Those are committee mm -hmm. meetings for us. We have had these this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there would be interest if it was at a different time? I think oh, that yeah. it would be That's interest. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of things in the community end up on the first and third Thursday. Yeah. For so I, don't, I think they don't want us to come sometimes. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, which I can understand when it comes to budget <laughs> time. Saying, but if uh, you wanted one of us to come, yeah. you might just move the meeting right. earlier. Or right. That is up for discussion. Yeah, we'll thank you. We had a county council meeting at the Bachman Tavern one time. That was the first That'd be fun. How come we can't fun. do that? No. Yeah. <laughs> are welcome to come back. Yeah, you can come back to the original first courthouse room. First yeah. courthouse, yeah. right. 1753. We had balls and chains. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you. I have a question. <laughs> yeah, I just had a couple questions, if you were uh, entertained. Um, the... Uh, you mentioned that you do have a hard copy because we couldn't read any yeah. any of this. So if you could just get it to Linda, she'll make sure we can all we can all get it. Um, the other thing is you alluded to this. Uh, do you have you have a relationship with Discover Lehigh Valley at this point? Yes, we have the honor of being the Easton Visitor Center for Discover Lehigh Valley, and we've been pleased to meet Mr. Michaels. He's a delight as a newcomer. Does he have plan? I mean, they and this has been anybody who you talked about history, and sometimes some of us get 
poked fun at because we've been around so long with part of history. Uh, but anyway, uh, there has been concerns over the years that uh, the tour Discover Lehigh Valley, sometimes they've been using the same flyers for the last 20 years. And, you know, and, uh, some people or folks say, what do they really do? Uh, so, I mean, I would say hopefully, because they do get a fair amount of funding, that uh, they are partnering or they're open to relationships with you other than just you being that site for them. Yeah, we absolutely see them as a resource. Um, we okay. are happy to deepen our relationship with them. Uh, we reached out to Mr. Michaels his very first week, mm -hmm. um, so we certainly expect to circle back. Um, but Good. we can accommodate more guests uh, at all of our programs, all of our lectures, all of our museums can accommodate more um, tourism, more human Well, and, and that's part of it is because I, I, I want to know, like you, you said that's good, because if you get any pushback or anything from them where they're not as cooperative as maybe they could be, you've got to let us know, because, uh, you know, they, uh, they, they should cooperate Thank with you, you. <laughs> we very get the sense fully. When we had the meeting with him that he was coming, because I think a couple people asked him that, yeah. what are your plans, he was sort of on his listening tour mm -hmm. at that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we got the sense initially that they are open to anything we want to bring to them. We mm -hmm. feel like we need to also help them out and do some of the legwork as opposed to just dumping something in the lap and saying, get us bus tours. If we can put together packages for them, it'll be much easier. And I think that that's where, if we could receive the funding for that marketing consultant yeah. for Passport to History, which is your 25 entities, that means just one consultant consultant is contacting Discovery Lehigh Valley with everybody's activities. So I think just getting a funnel into Discovery Lehigh Valley, morning call, one person calling on behalf of 25 entities is going to be huge. So we're, we're really excited by that grant application. But I think that's where Discovery Lehigh Valley could be helped. Okay. And, and the last thing I have is I, uh, I you guys, you know, it's, it's a wonderful, uh, what you're doing Easton is the, the history of, I always talk to people about when we're talking about what we're going to do in Easton, what should Easton do? I mean, Easton's so entwined in our history of this nation back before the uh, Revolutionary War, the Re Declaration of Independence, and so on. Um, I think uh, more emphasis on history as opposed to maybe high school all stars would would probably be a be, be, be a winner. But but I'm I'm a, I'm a history buff. But what I would like to say is, and this go, some people have said to me over the years is that. Their concern is that the historical society is very Eastern-centric and uh, doesn't understand that there's a slate belt or doesn't understand that there's a Western region. And I just wondered, what, what do you have to say to that? Do you feel that's unfair? Do you feel that there could be more? Like, since you are the county, you're, you're branded as the Northampton County Historical Society. And you have hit the nail on our challenge. And that's why we are, you know, you'll see it with our exhibition title, Destination Northampton County. We like to be called the Northampton County Historical and Genealogical. So that is our branding challenge. When On the back end, we always think county, certainly. Okay. And that's why Passport to History was so important to us, because we were able to reach out to those groups. But mm -hmm. One of the things that we noticed, it's exactly to your point, when we started talking about reaching out to get stories for this exhibition, I can't tell you how many people said, you are contacting the Slate Belt, you are talking to the Welsh or the Italians yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. One of the issues that we have is, is a very good one. The people who reach out to us to collaborate are often people who are local who are in Easton. For instance, it was the Easton branch of the NAACP who reached out to us. The Bethlehem branch is working with the library. But that's something we're trying to be very cognizant of balancing mm -hmm. as far as the messaging. I think it's natural that a lot of things happen in Easton because those are the ones who know us. But it's definitely something that we have to change and expand. And I think a lot of the reason why I was hired is I have professional experience at Historic Bethlehem Partnership as well as up in Nazareth. So I think that was a strategic plan on uh, on behalf of our executive director to bring in these other major groups. Yeah, I, I think that reaching out is a good idea. I mean, it might be slow to register. Some folks will take their time. But I think there's uh, people out there, because we've always been a very parochial area. But having said that, I think that now there's you know a lot of stories out there. Uh, as Ms. Hefner says, I tell too many of them, but uh, we can even talk about the origins of Skunk Road. But, but anyway, uh, <laughs> thank you for the work you you're doing. Uh, excuse me, um, County Executive would like to be addressed. 
just I, I have an, an announcement to make that I think um, our uh, leaders of the Historical Society would be would be interested in, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I might. Um, Please. So you know, I'm very concerned about the preservation of open and green spaces and mm -hmm. environmentally sensitive spaces, including wetlands. Um, it, so uh, that's a, a core value of mine. I think you all demonstrate that it's a core value of yours, but there are also other reasons to preserve uh, property and open space, and, mm -hmm. and um, we have been approached, and uh, I will be recommending to you that you accept three parcels oh. from doctors Ned and Linda Heindel. Oh. Um, they are donating awesome. the Hexencott Rock to yeah. Northampton yeah. County. Northampton County has been pursuing these three parcels for over 40 years. Uh, I have some uh, Bill Minio articles uh, uh, from the newspaper talking about uh, sitting on the witch's nose and talking about uh, the mysteries of Hexenkopf Rock. That if you accept their gift, and it is a gift, um, you will uh, you will own uh, those three parcels that that ridge sits on. And and the the reason I wanted to uh, talk about it with them is uh, it has tremendous historic value to us. Um, you know the the Lenape. Uh, used, uh, it is commonly understood, used it as uh, burial grounds. And um, there are others who um, uh, practice um, arts who also uh, believe it is significant uh, uh, to them in their, in their practices. So it's a, a very historic, uh, very historic piece of uh, rock, and it will be yours if you accept it. Oh. So we had that meeting, and um, the lawyers will work out the details, but that's where we're at. Fantastic. I Great news. You guys, I, thought you'd, I thought you'd be excited Great about Great timing that. on it. Yep. Excellent. Can we also say that it's the Go ahead. 60th wedding anniversary coming up. They're going to be having their party at the museum, but their 60th wedding anniversary oh, is coming okay. up, too. Right. So if you run into them, you can wish them a happy 60th One last thing. Can you also get us the date for your fundraiser? Or your, your, you said there was a... Yes. Happily. Yes. Thank you. When, yes. when you send, send us the information. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for your passion. And anybody have any other questions or comments? Uh, if not, thank you very much for everything you do. Thank you. And we, I think we have one do more we have thing. Else? Yeah, we oh, do have one more thing to uh, review. It was a, there's a handout. Everybody should have a handout for the Community Development Block Grant. So you do have this information. This is the um, recommendation for the 2019 CDBG or Community Development Block Grant projects that are funded with federal monies. Um, hopefully you can all read it. I think I've made it as large and bold as humanly possible. <laughs> um, but I can send this to anybody electronically as well. Um, we're just going to go over the list, and um, if you have any questions, certainly we can address them as we go. Well, before we even get started, in your package, uh, I also want to announce our anniversary, too. Our CDBG entitlement is also 10 years old, so <laughs> I, I didn't want to let... I didn't want to let that pass. But I did want to speak about community development block grants real quickly. And it's, and it's, it's one of the longest running programs at the US Department of Housing and Urban Development. The funds are used on local community development activities, such as affordable housing, anti-poverty programs, and infrastructure needs. CDBG funds are allocated to Northampton County on a formula basis. Congress instituted a dual formula to better serve communities with different types of problems. HUD calculates both formulas for all entitlement grantees and awards the largest amounts. But again, congressional appropriation has the ultimate determination on our program funding. Northampton County's CDBG projects are consistent with three broad national priorities for CDBG activities. Most of our activities also fall under benefiting low and moderate income level folks. Um, a lot of our programs this year are going to prevent elimination of slum and blight. And there's another third category, addressing urgent needs, which is mostly for disasters. In order to receive these CDBG funds, the county ran a process that solicited project ideas and plans from citizens, local organizations, and our local municipalities to address their needs. 
The CDBG appropriations includes funding to assist the county in providing services to our senior citizens, our veterans, and in providing rapid rehousing assistance to prevent our residents from becoming homeless. For the 2019, Northampton County is proposing to fund 44 projects using over $2 million of CDBG funds and also to use home funds of $568,799 for six additional activities. So you have the list in front of you and I'd certainly be happy to take any, any questions on any of the projects that you have. Oh yeah, Mr. Kusick has yeah. a question. Um, yeah, thank you very much, uh, nice list. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't the city of Easton at one time do their own CDBG and what Cor happened and correct. can you tell us the correct. history there? Uh, certainly, as uh, council members were, were involved in this process where the city of Easton and the county put their entitlements together. By doing this, we were able to achieve that home entitlement of the $568,000. We have additional money coming to us for the emergency solutions grant of about $300,000 we project. So Easton working with the county has produced almost a million dollars worth of additional revenues. That's certainly been a wonderful project at this point in time. And that's within the last year or two, right? This will be our first entitlement with Easton. Oh. Yes. I it just, okay. Yeah, because it's, it's seeing all these ones for Easton, uh, immediately rang a bell. Uh, the first question I had has to do with uh, several of these projects uh, say program administration. Now when I see that I always ask myself is that to pay somebody's salary? It, it, you're talking on the county side? Um, well there's the one for Easton, there's one for the for e, uh, the county, Correct. That, there's that the Slate Belt Rising Administration. Are those to, to pay salaries of, and of people? One of, the eligible, one of the beautiful things about CDBG, it provides administration dollars which is the hardest dollars in the funding committee to get. Okay, um, just a few of these, uh, the name doesn't, uh, isn't self-explanatory. What is Project Lifesaver? Project Lifesaver is a county planning activity. Um, there's a bracelet that, that helps um, folks who are say, Alzheimer's, seniors, oh, okay. um, younger children who are runners and, and, and need uh, special attention. There's a, there's a planning involved so we can actually be able to, police will be able to find these individuals by using a radio frequency. Oh, okay. The existing technology is all here. We just need to spend a little mm -hmm. money on the planning so that we can cover it around the county. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the other one is the Lehigh Valley Center for Independent Living. Do, the, do they cover both counties? Right, but this money is just for individuals with disabilities for Northampton County. The funding is exclusive to help individuals with disabilities find housing. Okay does Lehigh County also put in? Yes, okay. yes they do. So when I, I always want to know that when I see these organizations that call themselves Lehigh Valley. Um, and what is SCORE? SCORE is our retired executives who are working with our minority business young entrepreneurs to getting them loans and getting their business plans and getting them and moving forward. For a small amount of money, they, they're they project about 60 different uh, uh, small little businesses that are gonna, they're going to counsel this mm -hmm. year. I thought that was a very good use of funding. They get them up, they get them business plans and get them yeah. rolling. Yeah, right? they really do. I mean, and they're all volunteers, and this is just to cover, I guess, paper and pencil costs. Yeah, so after a while novel. here, you see so many acronyms yep. and different things. <laughs> I, I totally agree. <laughs> but, uh, okay, uh, thank you. What, one you thing, and then uh, sure. the meals on wheels I'm really glad they're doing something for those folks and is that every year they do that every year yeah. about the same amount or did they but up it we try to increase it whenever we can. Oh, okay yeah okay. last year as I brought to the council attention the meals on wheels program had a 20 percent run-up in it and a need for meals just in Northampton County oh, yeah. so we okay. want to make sure we pay close attention to their needs thank you, did you have a question? I do. Mr. Um, so last year I remember the total being a lot more it was like, wasn't it like more close to 800000 that the ask was for? L last year, was a, the, the allocation was 1.5. So okay. now with Easton, we get, it's like 2.1. Okay, because it says 2019 home program total. Oh, I'm looking on this page. So it's 2.1. Right, that's a, the second. that's a separate funding source. Separate. Oh, the separate. Right. That's one we okay. got. That's a good Easton clarification. Mm -hmm. So, 
of that two point one mm -hmm. million dollars, how much will you actually allocate? All, All of it. Every cent. Oh, okay. We have to spend it. Yep. Okay. So my okay, so my question too was is there any room for anybody else on this list? Do they have an opportunity to do they still have an opportunity or do they have to wait till next year? At next April. Next April. Yep. We'll be back in the market again. We'll have next four April. public we'll have four public hearings like we did this year and ask the public to attend and, you know, put applications in. Yeah, because the fire department at Bushkill Township asked came to me and I directed them to you and, and I don't see them on the list. Right. They right. would not be. Right. For an improvement? Because they're, 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 they're non profit? They uh, it's a unit of local government. They view, th HUD views that as the municipality's uh, obligation. This is an anti poverty program designed okay. for benefiting low to moderate income level folks. So. Right. But their, so their thing was that they are an emergency shelter. When, Nur and emergency they, shelter is a different story. So if there's like, um, you know, a catastrophe like a major snowstorm or Sandy or something like that. Their firehouse is the emergency shelter, and what they were asking for was a generator for it. Yeah. Would that the, still be hotel tax, even if they're emergency yeah. shelter? Yeah, it wouldn't be CDBG. It wouldn't be hotel tax. Right. Yeah. Or there C is a funding CF source for that. CFA. Right. Yeah. The yeah. old gaming grants. I just wanted to ask, and I appreciate your response. Oh, sure. Thank Absolutely. you. The, the last thing I did want to dis discuss with you, I also put the, we have a, a very robust lead paint hazard removal program. Mm -hmm. I'm going to seek your permission next month to put in, as a resolution to put in for another $2 million worth of funding. Just. What, from, from the county dollars? For for no. HUD funding dollars, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ask them for two million dollars more. I'm going to put the resolution. Yeah. You could run. If you don't ask, sometimes yep. so you no, never no. ask. Yep. Yep. Two million dollars. Hey. You know. I've heard one one other question on the, on the new found money where Easton and the county got together. I thought it was great last year. Mm -hmm. uh, District two school. Time. Is that is that the two Easton payments on the first page at the bottom, the 74 and the 86? Is that yes. what you found? Yes, it's, wow. it's what Easton wants wow. to use their, their portion. Great, great yeah. working together. That's fantastic. It is good. Does it? Does I'm sorry. Yep, no, you're up. I just want to know who made the determination of which projects are these all projects. We funded every project submitted to us but one. And then I also backed that project up. It was a Municipal Utilities Authority, and I gave them a couple different grant uh, uh, options. options for them. Yeah, that mm. we couldn't fund. The municipality wanted so that was needed the money. The no, no, not a bit. What was given to us, everybody, everything but one. I have a question. Mr. Oh yes. When when they like tailing on to what Mr. Cusick asked you, the administration part. Mm -hmm. I agree that sometimes people get uh, raised eyebrows. Do you have a, a formula or do you look when they come in and they say, okay, we need this? Do, do they have to justify, how, how do they, what's the process of justifying their ask for money to, which is basically you usually pay somebody? Well, when you look at administration dollars, if, if you're running a program, you would usually no more than 20% is, right. is a federal guideline. But if the program is dependent on that, that administration or that person, that staff person, and, and if the benefit is to low to moderate income level folks, that, that is an eligible activity oh, no, and that is an eligible cause. So that's that, so that would, that would, it would wait you, on you exactly. Into, for example, how many sources they may have coming in. Before. Oh, absolutely. Oh, right. yeah. So, so that, that's right. what I'm getting at. I yeah. mean, I, in the past, there's been cases where we didn't realize it and all of a sudden it popped up where we had somebody doing and the, the program was getting this much and from different sources the administrator was getting this much and that right. so sometimes has then bounced back at a right. public official right. elected official right? where right. were you guys so that's why i wondered right we monitor all process. our service agencies once a year anyway making sure we're we're so very they have to tell you what other sources they have coming absolutely in we do a scope of work and then we also do a budget so they'd have to adhere to the budget and if they're going to play, if they're going to pay administrative dollars, they're playing staffing. I have to know what it is. I also have to know the fringe rate they're looking to, to put into a total. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yep. 
Yes, I do. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the safe one. Right. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Warner. Oh. Upon you and, and the county executive's direction of the most at-risk folks, and that's where you'll usually find the CDBG monies. Any other Thank questions you. or comments? Mm -hmm. If not, I guess uh, nobody else has anything from the administration, and it's time to, for adjournment. Uh, the, what about the home program? Is that? Oh, did you want to review that quickly? The home program. The last page. This is a new program coming out of our, the benefit we have with, with Easton. Um, you'll see we have six activities, and this is the first year for us. None of the activities are underway just yet. These will all, I'll report on these probably a little bit later. But these are the activities that we're going to try to fund and get them up and running this year, including home improvement programs. Easton has a home improvement program. And we're going to, and the home improvement, the home program itself, is designed to build affordable housing. So that's what we're trying to do also. So that's that's the big goal of having home dollars. Can I, quick question Please. on that. Um, sure. Who is going to be administering that uh, from your department? That comes up under my, under okay. my watch. <laughs> and when will the grants be available? I see $250,000 uh, listed. Uh, how, how will those be awarded and what will the process it'll, be? It'll be ready October for uh, moving forward with it, environmental reviews and things like that. So usually October, we usually say the money is usually available. Okay, will that be on the website and will, will there be outreach yes. to the municipalities? Right, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good questions. Anybody else? Okay, thank you very much. Thanks again. All right, motion to adjourn. Already, hmm.